Hi, welcome to the channel. Um, I was about to say this is Cinemani, but I changed my name, so it might be Galago. Cinemani Galago, it doesn't matter. Either one. Anyway, hi. This is my first time doing a video like this, so bear with me. Um, but I will be talking about mostly why I do not like most webtoons. But I will end on a positive note on ones that I do like. Or at least webcomics in general, they're not all on webtoons. But my main gripes right now is with webtoons. Disclaimer! I am not a writer, so you know, this is just my opinion on things that I read and I personally just don't like. And then my second disclaimer is that I totally understand that people can be hobbyists. Not every single webcomic to ever be made has to be a masterpiece or has to be like deep and meaningful and the art has to be great and perfect and any of that, nothing like that. I'm just giving my thoughts on webtoons. Okay, my first point, which I don't really like about webtoons, is that, my god, all of them seem to mostly be high schoolers. This is a problem that I have with anime as well. I just, I don't care about high schoolers' lives. I'm so sorry. I'm in my 20s. I don't want to read about high schoolers anymore. Especially when I have to read about like their drama and their love lives. I don't care. It's really hard to be invested in people who are like 15. Like not to say that it's impossible. I do like some kids shows. But for the most part, I don't, especially when it comes to like love and romance. I, I would like to read about people that are my age or even older. I don't think I've ever really seen a webtoon that featured someone that was older than I am. Like as a main character or even one of the main characters. It's usually people that are like 21 and under. I guess it kind of comes into this point somewhat is that so many webtoons, like everyone is attractive, boringly attractive. And like, sidebar, but this one time I had to go on Pinterest because I really needed references for my OC Vaughn. So I type in cute white guy and try to see what the results are. And it was just like, the same guy 71 times. Like, they were just made out of a factory. Like, I was just shocked and appalled that these were mostly this different dudes because like, they all had short hair, they all had perfect teeth, perfect skin, pale, no sort of, you know, facial, uh, uh, piercings, no tattoos, uh, not even ear piercings, and no glasses, like, just, just nothing, like, like, they, they, literally, like, they were just made in a factory somewhere, and that's how I feel when I read web webtoons, because, like, the only difference between the guy that I saw, the guys that I saw on Pinterest and webtoons is that usually the, the love interest or the main guy has black hair and he may or may not be Asian, that's literally it. I've seen this guy somewhere on the screen, a zillion times this guy has gotten more play than every single man in america times seven i'm tired of seeing this guy this may be like an unpopular opinion but like personally i find guys way hotter when they are when they have quote unquote flaws some sort of character give them a scar acne i don't know glasses uh, maybe one eye is um droopier than the other just something but just like this model picture perfect guy like you, it feels like an alien to me. That's not interesting. That's not hot to me. I'm tired of seeing the very boring main girls too, also. Very, again, very K-pop Korean, I think they're called Manwa. Manwa inspired, um, usually shortish bob, uh, probably brunette, but like a lighter brown. Same girl, same guy, same people. I never see anyone who's older. I, I would like to see people who are older, who have age, who, who seem like they have lived life a little bit something but i'm tired of seeing everybody be so so extremely conventionally attractive that it's just boring i don't and their personalities are just as boring you just pick out of like three main romance tropes and then that's it that's it my next point that i guess they're, they're kind of rolling into each other my next point is that i don't uh, I don't really feel like a lot of people who make webtoons or like the most popular of webtoons are just very, they're not passionate, like, I should have said this before, but webtoons are so very made for webtoon in a way that I do not like. The most der derogatory way you can take that. They don't ever feel like they're passion projects from someone who had OCs when they were five and have had this one OC story forever and is finally telling it to the world. Like, I will generally read something that sucks if I see that that's like your passion project or you're very passionate about it and you're really having fun with it. Maybe, maybe I'm just saying that more webtoons need to have more ADHD and or autism because like, 
I need y'all to go harder in the paint for y'all owns webtoons for me. Like, I should go on your Instagram, Tumblr, like, wherever you, you know, do your business and, like, see memes about your OCs, pretty drawings that I don't know the meaning of, but I'll know when you do the webtoon. Big lore dumps, like, it just, it just never screams passion to me. It just screams some sort of, just a comic, just a comic that you're doing. Again, disclaimer, not all of them have to be passion projects, but so many of them are just, like, so passionless. It's just, I don't know, kind of sad to see. A lot of webtoons just feel like people take a dart and they throw it at the wall. Like, there's a bunch of words on the wall. They throw a dart at it. Whatever it lands on, they'll put the words together and then make a story. They're, they're so cookie cutter. They're so, they're, they're interchangeable at this point. So many of them are the same. They're very boring. Again, with the high schoolers, all conventionally attractive and just boring. Just, just some random string of words that they found. As I said before, webtoons are so specifically webtoons. Like, they are made for that site. There's like a formula, I guess, that they are not trying to stray from. <laughs> and speaking of things being made specifically for webtoons, I do not like the way comics are for mobile. I don't like the long webtoons. I like when I can look at the panels, like have fifth, uh, maybe 10 panels on a page and I can read from left to right or, or right to left, it really doesn't matter. I don't like the long scrolling things because one, I am not on my phone all that much. I feel like something about the mobile way that the comics are done is very limiting because let's say you have a character who's speaking and you can get a conversation done in about one page. You do seven panels and you can have someone have a dialogue. The same page for a webtoon mobile probably has one panel in it. And I think it makes the pacing weird because like, again, like, let's say a page is five inches long. A page that is five inches long can have seven panels and the conversation ends. In a webtoon, one five inch page probably has one panel of someone saying something. So you're scrolling forever and ever and ever and ever and ever trying to get this conversation over with. <laughs> but you can't because each page has like one singular panel in it. I also, I, I won't say that the mobile panels are terrible because sometimes like when you scroll down and it scrolls into a gradient, that's kind of fun. But for the most part, I just do not like the paneling of mobile comics like that. I, I think it limits a lot of things. I don't really see the appeal. Like obviously they're for mobile so you can scroll, but I don't, I don't really like them. And then the art of webtoons in general. Again, disclaimer, I do not think every webcomic has to be the best one in the world. I don't think you have to be award-winning to be able to make a webcomic. But the art in webtoons are just... I'm, I'm so tired of seeing the big-ass 3D asset and then the obviously hand-drawn person. And nine times out of ten, the hand-drawn quote-unquote uh, characters are also really stiff because they're obviously using the 3D models and clip and like tracing it so directly. It's just, it's bad. Like the assets are not meshing, they're not mixing. A lot of people just don't even care to mix them. I have no problem with artists taking shortcuts, but I would like for things to look good. Is that too much to ask? again disclaimer but i just feel like if you're if you're doing a webtoon that you get paid for i feel like you should probably just put a little bit more effort into meshing the two. Oh, and another one i forgot this was actually supposed to be my first point but i'm i guess i'm just gonna come around to it but one thing that i noticed in a lot of webtoons that i really really hate and i know that they're webtoon specific because they always have the mobile pa paneling is that in the first episode they will explain to you every single thing about the plot, the lore, the character, the main character, maybe even some other characters, instead of letting me figure out it on my own. That's one of my biggest gripes. If I go into your webcomic and the art's off, the paneling and the speech bubbling is off, and then you're just gonna give me the whole plot in the first episode, I'm just scrolling away. I'll hit the back button. I'll close webtoon. I'll open tapas. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot stand it. Again, not a writer. But I just feel as though I should be able to put the pieces together myself. I don't know. I mean, there are some times when you might need to explain something. But again, I don't think it needs to be a dump of lore. An info dump, if you will. In the first episode. I just, I hate it. It's like, listen, 
I actually got into a webcomic a few days before recording this and it like it really shows what I like in webcomics or at least like the opposite of what not to do. So the comic is called Fair Meadow. I will try not to say too many spoilers or anything but basically it starts with an orc and she has a big like gash or uh, a very big wound and it's never explained. She just goes through the forest and then she finds some person and she's very aggressive with that person and that person just tries to help her but she's extremely aggressive. Why is she aggressive? Well, we don't know yet. We have to read the story to understand. But if this was a webtoon, they would have put it all in the first um, episode that she's an orc and she got the wound because of this and she's this because she has this trauma and whatever trauma came before like there was a war and here's a lauren and what all elves are names and why elves don't like orcs and blah 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 blah. instead of just letting me piece together the story naturally i really enjoyed this comic so i'll be re-saying it at the end but it's just like the exact opposite of what webtoons do if this was a webtoon they would have just info dumped and i would have hated it is it just because like webtoon readers don't read actual books like, I feel so rude for saying that, but is that it? Like, are they saying that we don't have any sort of reading comprehension or anything like that and that's why we have to have the entire thing in the first episode? Or, or is it, I don't know, some sort of capitalism thing where they're like, maybe people are reading 77 webtoons at a time and we gotta make sure we you know everything in the first- listen. I will wait as long as I need to. I know this probably isn't the average person, but I will wait as long as I need to for somebody to put their update out. If that makes the writing better, and more interesting and engaging, trust me, I'll be fine. <laughs> um, but the next, um, the next few points that I have personally are me as a black reader, why I don't really like webtoons, and this sort of goes into the point that I made about everyone being attractive, or quote unquote extremely conventionally attractive, and that goes with melanin as well. There are so little main characters that are a touch darker than what apricot or stark white and especially anyone that's actually brown and especially especially anyone that's actually black and then to top it off if there is a black main character nobody else is black that's it can you name five web comics or webtoons where the main character is black and the person that they are trying to date is also black i'll make it even easier can you name five webtoons where the main character is black and then their love interest is another person of color but is like brown can you name a webtoon where there's a black main character and like a black friend group probably not i said five but you probably can't even name one and then the black characters that are there i don't know how to exactly say it but like they're so well sometimes they're just so interchangeable with like a non-black character that it just doesn't read as relatable to me i don't mean that a character needs stereotypes but like if you if you ask any black person you can usually tell if someone black is in the writing room or not like there's just a vibe and i get it that like interesting and very real or authentic black stories are probably only going to come from black people but like webtoon doesn't really you know what is the word promote black stories like that like kaleidoscope was on webtoon and they got picked up by tapas a lot of webtoons just they there's that's not what they're looking for they're not looking for care the, for webtoons that are extremely black like that and that's one of the reasons why I really, I find the best comics on tapas personally because one, a lot of them don't have that annoying mobile format of paneling and then two, I just find more diverse stories and like not every story that I read has to have a black person in it or anything like that but I just find more interesting, more diverse, more like the styles are way more like stylistic and interesting and punchy than the ones that I find on webtoons, you know? most people that most times i find a, something that i like on webtoon it is not like made for webtoon they're just hosting it on there most of the times their home base is like comic fury or um again tapas and then they're just cross posting to webtoons i just just the quality personally what i see is that tapas is just way more suited for more interesting um diverse uh fun comics just personally for me now that i've done like 20 minutes of hating now i'm going to become a lover so i'm going to start talking about the webcomics that i like 
Um, first I'll try to start with some webtoon ones so I don't, you know, end on a hating note. So I have, um, Here Be Dragons. It's apparently by Dis Steel and Steve Horton. Um, it's about Bree, a dragon speaker. Um, she gets a message from, like, a dying dragon or something, and then she has to, like, get together with some knights and go save it and things like that. It's very, very... The art is very pretty to me. I think the main character is really pretty and cute. I like her, um... Like her spunkiness and also her uh, her piercings, very beautiful. Then there's uh, when the rain falls, which is by Afro Didi Pup, Samira, S Samira Jackson. She gets like a, a, she finds herself in a perfect relationship with a seemingly perfect man, and all that. It's just very cute. I like it so far. Samira is very adorable. Um, the art is very. I I love the way this person draws lips and hair especially also reading men of the harem but the art style isn't very much for me it's, it's extremely anime i mostly read it because the mc is a girl bond and the men in here have titties on them that's really it i'm also reading um summon to watch over me which is by Calais blue um it's just kind of cute and slice of life slice of lifey and um basically she summons a demon boyfriend i believe by accident and he just kind of follows her around everywhere like to work and things like that it's just cute if you're a girly who likes size difference you're gonna like this one my last webtoon one is the end of you um it's about a lady named miss clover who um uh she sings either like a club or a bar at night and then like this big kingpin dude comes and takes a liking to her and like i guess they date or whatever or hook up and i don't know it's like a little cute little love story both of them are fine both Miss Clover and the Kingpin. Like, finally a webtoon I can read where, like, the man is, like, grown. Like, grown, grown. Plus, I was so excited to see that Miss Clover and some other characters in there speak Haitian Creole. I'm not good at Creole or anything. I'm Jamaican-American. But it was just really nice to see another um, Caribbean, I assume, American artist. Now, time for my top of stories. My, f my number one right now would be Ride or Die. Um, it's about finding love and cars and supernatural. And most importantly, it's about men in masks. Well, there's only one. Well, there's a few, but there's one that I care about the most. And also the main guy, Vic, I want him so badly. Another one that I talked about is um, Kaleidoscope. It came from Webtoons and it got to be a Tapas original. It's about like, hell. <laughs> well, not hell hell, but like, there's this girl named Dante. Everybody's like named after like, things of hell and they have magical tattoos and the main girl's so pretty and I want her to end up with the purple head guy so bad. Listen, I am doing so badly at saying the things that I like, but please just read them. Just look, just look at the pictures. Then there's also Stick and Poke. It's this um, comic about a girl who really liked this band when she was like in high schoolish and got a tattoo of them. Then later in life, she gets to work for them, and she like meets her crush from high school, and she's like the band social media manager, or whatever. It's very cute. I really like that one also. Oh, forgot to talk about Fair Meadow again. I said it in the sometime in the middle of the vid, but it's about like. Um, a woman, a Tsarian orc, who wakes up, you know, not really a lot of memories, I guess, and she's just going throughout the woods and finds, like, a commune of people who are pacifists, and she's very, very angry, and she's, like, trying to figure out how to live with them and all that kind of stuff. There's also The Others, which just started. It's, um, there's, like, a family, uh, with the line of witches or whatever, and it's just a supernatural drama that follows them. Then there's Agent Mads, which is about like a girl who's a talent agent, I believe in Los Angeles, and she's trying to find like something for her dad's short film. I guess she's trying to find like actors for it or whatever. And I think it is so cute. I love how it's drawn. It's very quaint. Then there's Bellum Pultrum, um, story about kids like entering like this um global fighting thing it's called bellum poltrum and like everybody has powers or like demons or whatever they fight and i guess they're just trying to be the number one top bellum poltrum fighter i think it's really really cute i love the style that it's in oh my god i'm so sorry i totally forgot to tell you guys what some of these comics are drawn by well who some of these comics are drawn by listen it will all be in the description okay okay and then my last one which is auntie Aunt auntie auntie please please be auntie um, but basically, there is like three friends, and they live in like it seems like like a fictional version of Jamaica. I believe it's called Ocho, and they all have like all the people have um, elemental powers, and they mostly 
I don't know, just dick around. But, you know, some people are always gonna use their powers for evil, so they gotta clean that up. Um, oh, and they also do martial arts. I think it's really cute, and I cannot wait for the next chapter. The next two comics aren't on Tapas or Webtoon, I believe, or at least they don't update like that on there. So the first one is Being Stalked. It's on Comic Fury. It's about fairy tales. It's very, very cute. I love how it's drawn, and Nana and Jack invented love. And then my second one is Superpose. It may be on Tapas. I don't know if they um, uh, update very much on there. I usually read it on their site. But it's hard to explain what the comic is about, but it's set in the 1980s and they're making a machine. The, the main characters, the three main characters, and it's just beautifully drawn and I love, I just love seeing it. Yep, and that is all. I think that's all the um, comics that I read, like I keep really, really up to date with. Um, I'll be sure, well, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll ever make a video like this again, but I will definitely keep sharing my the comics that I support because I love to support comic artists. Um, and that is all. Till next time.